This is Dr. Margaret Hoenig. Um, in this lecture, we will uh, talk about how we dose insulin and what we need to consider when we feed and monitor a diabetic animal. The recommended initial dose of insulin is 0.5 units per kilogram subcutaneously in the dog, and in the cat, it's 0.2 to 0.5 units per kilogram also subcutaneously. Um, usually that translates to about one to three units and um, we really need to remember that in the cat the initial dose should not exceed three units. Um, BID administration uh, is usually necessary in most dogs and cats even if we use the so-called intermediate or long-acting insulin preparations because the action time is just not long enough for good control over 24 hours if we only give it once a day. When we use human insulin preparations, and I said we frequently do that, uh, the human insulin preparations come in a concentration of 100 units of insulin per milliliter. They need to be injected with the right syringe with a so-called 100 unit per milliliter syringe. So that is a syringe that um, is um, um, made to contain 100 units per milliliter. We can uh, use a smaller size insulin syringe, um, a so-called 3 tenths cc insulin syringe in cats. But again, uh, the marking is such that the smaller insulin um, also only can be used for the 100 unit per milliliter insulin preparation. This is different for the two preparations uh, which have been approved for veterinary use, ProSync and Vetsulin. Both of those preparations contain 40 units per milliliter and they need to be injected with the appropriate syringe, which is a 40 unit per milliliter syringe. If you use the wrong syringe, let's look at uh, the calculation here. 10 units of a 40 unit per mil insulin in a 100 unit per mil insulin syringe would um, amount to 25 units of insulin. So if you were to do this, instead of giving an animal 10 units of insulin, you would give it 25 units. And the opposite is also true. 10 units of a 100 unit per mil insulin given in a 40 unit per mil insulin syringe would amount to only four units. So you basically would give two and a half times less to a diabetic than what you intended to do would you have used the right syringe. You can also use uh, pens, so-called insulin pens, uh, which mostly contain human um, insulin. Uh, they are used frequently in human medicine. Um, they are nice to use because the owner does not have to draw up the insulin into a syringe. Uh, these pens contain a cartridge filled with insulin and it's very easy for the client to administer the insulin. There actually has been recent approval of a pen for uh, veterinary use, so-called vet pen, which contains vetsulin. Now we already talked about diluting insulins when we talked about glargine. Glargine should never be diluted. Other insulin preparations could be diluted, but if you do that you would need to use the diluent by the company, otherwise you completely change the pharmacokinetics um, of this insulin preparation. Well, if we um, look at what a, a good control would, um, would, would be in a diabetic animal after we give insulin, it should look like a, a, a shallow bowl. 
So we have a higher starting glucose concentration. We give the insulin. Insulin would bring the glucose into the cell. Glucose would decrease. And then as the insulin action wanes, glucose, um, blood glucose would increase again. Again, that should be a shallow bowl. What we should not do is give too much insulin, which brings the glucose concentration into the hypoglycemic range, because what we will see then, uh, what is shown on this um, slide here, is that um, the animal will react to this hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is a stress condition, and so stress hormones will be secreted, which will lead to gluconeogenesis, which will lead to an increase in blood glucose. <clears throat> this is called Somochi rebound. So Somochi rebound is the reaction of a diabetic animal to hypoglycemia. You should avoid hypoglycemia because of this rebound. Um, if you get this rebound, it will be more difficult uh, for maybe a day or two or more to regulate the blood glucose in the animal that had this rebound because of the um, stress hormones that will have led to uh, insulin resistance to decreased reaction of the animal to the insulin. What about uh, time of feeding? Usually, you should feed the animal before you inject insulin to see if that animal is doing well that day. And ideally, at least in the dog, food intake should occur before the insulin peak, so the insulin has some substrate to work on. In cats, most cats don't really um, eat um, uh, like, uh, like dogs do. Uh, most cats sometimes snibble all day long, and, and that is fine. You can deal with this um, uh, by um, adjusting insulin preparation, by adjusting the dose, um, and, and by adjusting food and so forth. What kind of food should you give and how much? Um, the most important thing is that you give a balanced nutritional meal to both dogs and cats. In cats, uh, it's recommended to give a high-protein uh, meal, but there is no data supporting any negative effect of carbohydrates. The amount should be constant. Um, and then if you are dealing with an obese diabetic, that um, uh, obese diabetic needs to lose weight because it's very difficult to get good uh, glucose control in an obese uh, animal because the obesity leads to insulin resistance. So the insulin that you inject is not working optimally. And really what is important is that the owner um, counts the calories. So it's important that there is a constant amount of food. So what this slide reiterates is, and this is true for humans as well as for our animals, it's the calories. We need to really count calories when we feed our animals. I was actually shocked when I did a study a few years ago um, where we looked at normal weight, overweight, obese, diabetic cats, and, and we found that most of the um, diabetic obese, uh, uh, most of the diabetic cats, um, and also the overweight and obese cats, still receive food at libitum. So I think uh, we need to do a much better job as veterinarians to educate our clients about uh, nutrition in diabetic animals. There are some other considerations. For instance, it's important uh, that the dog or cat like the food. Um, do not try to impose one particular type of food uh, on an animal if they don't like it. It's very difficult to deal with a diabetic that has received insulin and then doesn't eat the food. 
And it's important that you feed them and you give the insulin at the same time each day. You have some, some window, like plus minus uh, two hours, uh, but you should not um, uh, give a diabetic more leeway in terms of, of uh, when, when that animal is treated. Um, when we look at the uh, goal of treatment with respect to blood glucose, it's a little different than uh, the goal in uh, people. We don't quite want to um, bring the blood glucose down as low um, because our animals cannot convey uh, when they perceive hypoglycemia. So the blood glucose should be below the renal threshold, ideally, but above 100 milligrams for most of the day for excellent control. And again, you want to avoid hypoglycemic episodes. You can tell your uh, cat client that about 25 to 50 percent of diabetic cats go into remission um, when you start treatment, um, which means that they may not need um, insulin treatment anymore after a few weeks. The client needs to be educated uh, about insulin administration. How do we give it? How do we store it? Uh, where, where can insulin be injected? Um, and we need to definitely talk to them about uh, the difference in insulin syringes. Uh, if they treat an animal with one of the animal source insulin, so when they run out of syringes that they don't just go to a human pharmacy to get more insulin syringes because the human pharmacy would have the 100 unit per mil insulin syringes and for the uh, Vetsulin or uh, PCIR they would need 40 unit per mil syringes. So this is really important. We need to avoid hyper and hypoglycemia and need to tell the owner what to watch for and then we also need um, to tell the owner if there is a hypoglycemic episode, how to treat this, that they can give caro syrup, that they can give other glucose containing solutions, um, they can give honey, uh, those kinds of things. So that is really important. Client education needs to be a major part of treating a diabetic. So in summary, um, we talked about dosing insulin, feeding, and monitoring a diabetic. Um, we recommended that starting dosages must um, be customized to individual patients and their response. Uh, we talked about using the appropriate insulin syringes for insulin concentrations that are used, that we have U40 insulin and U100 insulin, which means we have either 40 units of insulin per mil or 100 units per insul uh, of insulin per mil. We talked about the importance of a balanced high quality and in cats high protein nutrition um, and that consistent feedings are important. And then we talked about um, that responses are individually different and of course a practitioner um, will do what we call glucose curves uh, in animals after they have been uh, on insulin for a while to check how um, the insulin preparation is working in a particular animal.